Welcome to Next Level Greatness, the podcast. Around here, we'll be talking about all things expansion, going from good to great and from great to greatness. I'm your host, Barbie Collab. Get ready for your next level. Let's do this. Welcome to Next Level Greatness, the podcast. This is, I would say, part two or three on healing. If you missed last week's episode, I talked about the importance of pacing yourself when you are on a healing journey. And I also referred to episode number four, where I originally talked about healing and the importance of believing that you can heal. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about how challenges in life and difficult emotions, whether you're having health issues or you're going through something that is really tough in life, how these challenges are an opportunity for us to awaken, to become more evolved. And I'm smiling because... It, I know it doesn't always feel like that. I know when the poop hits the fan in life, we don't feel like, oh, thank you, God. Thank you for this amazing opportunity to expand. But oh, what is the alternative? The alternative is we can become bitter that we're being challenged. And I'm talking about disease. I'm talking about something horrible, like losing a child or losing a limb. You know, I'm talking about really very difficult life stuff. I know that there are people that say everything happens for a reason. I don't know about that. I really don't know about that. Or that there's a good reason why everything happens. I still don't know about that. But I do know that no matter what happens, that we can create the meaning we can make sense of it in a way that allows for us to become better human beings. And so today, I am going to give you very specific practices, and I'm going to give you very specific practices that helped me with or that are helping me because I'm not fully healed. Like I told you last week, it's not like I'm this energizer bunny of energy. It's more like I have 40-50% battery in my tank and I am living a very meaningful life and I'm having success. I've just had to redefine that success. And in fact, the kind of success that I'm having feels really yummy and it feels really good because I'm not overworking and because I'm really doing my soul's purpose. Okay, so let's jump right in. In episode four of my podcast, I did talk about visualization and gratitude. And when I visited the podcast, I re-listened last week, I realized that I had gotten out of the habit of visualizing. And it was so key in my progress because as I had mentioned, I was really struggling with the vertigo. And so being awake every moment was really, really difficult because I felt nauseous or dizzy or extremely foggy. And so I made it my business. I made it my job. I made it my purpose to visualize myself feeling great and using certain imagery of the dogs playing, of us about keeping up with the dogs and being active. And I truly believe that that helped me to heal. I really, from the bottom of my soul, believe that. I have something super fun for you. I decided I've just finished recording a Quantum Leap Future Self Meditation. And I will give this free. So I will give it away for free for anyone and everyone that would like to leave me an Apple review. If you love my podcast, because thank you so much, you guys, more and more I'm receiving messages that my podcast is just really landing. And I think it's really landing because I'm being just 
more and more myself, which means what? I'm being just more comfortable. One of my dear, dear friends that I've known for over 30 years, hi, Kelly. She said, it's just like it's who you are at your core and I'm really appreciating you. So the way that you can show the appreciation is through your reviews because my intention and my goal is to make an impact and I want more people to be able to hear what I have to say, my message. And the way that that happens is through reviews because Apple Podcast pushes out my podcast when we have reviews. So if you feel called, if you love my podcast and you feel called to leave me a review before you submit it, send me a screenshot. You can message me on Instagram. I'm at barbie.kalev. You can email me barbiekalev at gmail. I'll leave the instructions below and just screenshot it before you hit submit. Send it to me. Post and tag if you would like. You don't have to do that part. And in exchange or as a thank you, I would send you an 18 minute, it's like 17 minutes and a 32 second meditation. It's a quantum leap meditation. And it's for anyone that wants to envision their future selves, whether it's healthy, happy, rich, or all of the above. I'm super, super excited. I figured out how to do the technology on my own because I didn't know how to superimpose, if that's the word, the music, but I did it. I did it. And I'm extremely excited about it. So visualization is one of the practices. The second one is gratitude. And I really don't want to confess that I feel like I had fallen out of gratitude. I think sometimes we just take certain things for granted. In listening to episode four, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm doing so much better, but I always want to feel my best. And so listening to that episode, I was like, okay, it's time to start expressing my gratitude way more. And I am a grateful person, but I'm committing to doing it way more. And what does that look like? It means being appreciative of what you can do. I was chatting with my friend about loss. She is going through health issues. She is a very, very successful professional. And she was just saying how she has to rest a lot more. And she's frustrated that she can't do the things that she used to do. And it's not to be depressing on this podcast, you guys, but the truth is that there is a sense of grief that comes with not being able to do all the things that you used to do. And what am I talking about specifically? So for example, I loved working out four or five times a week. I'm 48 years old. I'm going to be 49 on March 30th. And I've been able to keep my physique. And it's not only about that, but I I am not ashamed to admit and to say that I love fitting into my jeans, not having to hide my muffin tops. Like I love that. But right now, I sometimes have to choose still. If I work out today, then that means that for right now, this is my reality right now. This means that I will be tired tomorrow and the next day probably. And so I can only work out maybe twice a week. And there are some weeks that I can't. There have been times, many times where I have to choose, okay, If I work out today, then I'm going to be really tired tomorrow and I need to do or I want to do this project or I want to create a podcast. So I have to choose between my workout and my podcast. And sometimes I will choose my podcast. Or if I know that I'm on a certain day, I'm going to have a Zoom call or I'm going to teach, then I know that I can only do one or two of those per week. So I'll admit, it's really freaking easy to focus on the loss, right? Because a healthy person, a fully healthy, vibrant, I'm talking vibrant person, can do four Zoom calls a day, can do five workouts a week, can can go out with her friend. And so there is grief. There is. And so how do you deal with that? And so for me, it's really focusing on what I get to do 
what I can do. So like if your whole body hurts, for example, well, do your toes hurt? And you think I'm kidding. I'm really not kidding. I, I really am serious. Do your toes hurt? Like focus on what doesn't hurt. Focus on what is good in your life. And maybe what's good is your relationship with your partner, your friends. And let's say you don't have that. Well, do you have a pet? There has something that has got to be good in your life that you can focus on. And if there isn't, then that's a sign that you need to find something that is good in your life and that brings you joy. And it could be anything. It could be finding the beauty of the blue sky or the gray sky or the branches. Lately, I've been, well, I've been walking, thank goodness. I've been walking and we have some woods around here. And I am just so reveling in the beauty of the trees and how wild trees are and how perfect they are with their branches coming out every which way. And here we are as humans trying to constantly change ourselves and constantly not loving ourselves, not accepting ourselves. And so just that activity, it doesn't require money. It doesn't require much of anything. It just requires us noticing. So that is an actual practice that I do. Of course, divine timing is exactly what it is. I woke up, I grabbed my phone because I like to do meditation in the morning. That is another practice. And the meditations that I do, I have so many different programs that I am signed up for. But a lot of times I just listen to a meditation on YouTube. I seriously just Google whatever it is that I need in that moment. It might be a calming anxiety meditation, confidence meditation, forgiveness meditation, some kind of get ready for your day hypnosis. I do something and that is something that is very much ingrained into my routine and that I love. But yesterday, the day before yesterday, I opened my phone and the darn thing started playing on its own with Tara Breath, who is a meditation. Uh, well, no, she's not a meditation teacher. She is a meditation teacher, but she's a spiritual leader, I would say. And she's been around forever. I want to say that she's in her 60s. It's irrelevant. My point is that she's incredible and that she's seasoned and that she has written many books. I will link the particular video that I saw on YouTube below in the show notes because she provides a meditation having to do with the road to mindfulness and an acronym she didn't create this acronym, but she talked about it and she teaches about it, which I thought was so perfect. And I did not know about this acronym up until two days ago. And yet this is exactly what I do because I've done a lot of spiritual work. I've done a lot of the inner work. I love Eckhart Tolle and The Power of Now. And oh my gosh, I can't remember right now his book on being still. Maybe it's called Stillness. But I've taken some of his courses. And so I know a lot and I actually teach about awareness. And so with awareness can come change. That's what I teach in Money Magnet. But as it relates to healing and going through these difficult emotions of, for example, asking yourself, like, why me? Or I'm angry that I'm not able to do this or I'm frustrated that I have these limitations or I'm sad that my mother has X illness or whatever it is. These are difficult emotions that can really dysregulate our nervous system and just paralyze us or make us bitter if we don't deal with them and emotions are meant to be felt. I feel like I'm sort of repeating here what Tara Brack talks about, but this is embodied in me. I mean, this is really stuff that I talk about and that I know intimately. So let me tell you what the acronym is. RAIN, as like rain, it's pouring rain. So RAIN, recognition is the R. Recognize. So recognize when you're feeling angry, when you're feeling sad, that you're not able to do the things that you used to do, for example. 
can you just recognize that you're experiencing these emotions and the acronym RAIN, the A is for acceptance. Can you accept that this is what you're feeling right now? So acceptance doesn't mean that you're like, okay, well, this is the way it is and this is the way that it's always going to be and that you have to give in to whatever it is and feel like you're stuck. No, it's just acceptance that this is what you're feeling. And I know that for overachievers, that's what we really focused on last week on the episode. It can be really difficult because we're always trying to fix things. We're always trying to do things. And so many of us have tried to go through life denying the feelings that we have. And instead, if we actually just process them, accept them, allow them to run through our system, then they'll resolve themselves. Tara uses this metaphor of like a hose, like a water hose. And you know, when you bend the hose, the water has like a kink and it can't, the water can't flow. But when you recognize and accept and you witness the pain that you're feeling, the water can flow. And I love that metaphor. It's such a beautiful way to look at what we do with our emotions instead of trying to suppress them. And then the I in RAIN is investigate or interest. So it's not a dissection of everything that we are experiencing and trying to analyze. Again, that's with the mind. But can we get curious? Can we get curious about what it is that we're feeling? So we notice, we're like, okay, well, I'm feeling this anger. I'm feeling this sadness. So a lot of times we feel anger, like I'm so freaking pissed, I can't do this and I can only do this on this day and I can't do that. It's like, okay, can I recognize that I'm feeling that? Can I accept it? Yeah, I can accept that this is where I am right now and get curious. Like what is behind this feeling? Behind the anger is often sadness. Behind the shame is often a feeling of rejection, that we're going to be rejected behind the frustration. And that's familiar to me. Sometimes I get frustrated that I'm like, oh, I want, there's so much that I want to do and I feel limited. And behind that frustration for me, so if I get curious, is sadness that I can't do some of the things that I want to do in the way that I want to. I can still do them. I just can't do them all in one week like I used to. And if I get curious, I also see that sometimes for me, it's a feeling of, it's the old me. It's it's a feeling that I want to and have to, no, want to keep up with other people that are doing really well. And when I get curious about that and realize like, oh, it's just me. It's just the overachiever me that wants to do all the things like everybody else that I see achieving, then I'm able to soften then I'm able to soften because I'm like, okay, what's the point? If I do all these things, it's going to do what? If the end result is going to be in more fatigue or more what? More money? Like, okay, sometimes you got to pay the bills and stuff like that. But, you know, I think when I'm talking about myself, right? Like when I get curious, then I realize like, okay, I can chill out. It's not about the money. It's not about, it's my little ego that wants to do all the things and also the part that really enjoys creating. But if I go back to acceptance and recognition, then I'm able to soften. And then finally, the N in RAIN is nurture. And I love this one so much. I love this one so much because so often from my clients, and I'm talking about in my fitness and wellness business, I hear clients who message me and they'll say things like, I'm so mad at myself. I hate myself for not doing this or allowing me to gain all this weight. Or people people tell me, share a lot with me about their illnesses or whatever their conditions are. And it is with such deprecation. Yeah, self-deprecation. There we go. With such self-deprecation, like they see themselves as weak, as feeble, as inept. And what we actually need is love. And what we actually need is nurturing. I see that too. And my dog just made the biggest like, ah, sound, which is so appropriate. Um, 
I see that too in my courses where sometimes I have students or clients fill out forms in the beginning, like intake forms, and they'll say things like, I need you to be tough on me. I need you to call me out and, you know, call me out on my blind spots. And I always begin my courses by saying that's the wrong course. What we need is more nurturing, more self-love, more self-acceptance. And so when you're struggling with a difficult emotion, ask yourself, what do I need right now? What do I need right now? What do you need to tell yourself? And sometimes what I need to tell myself, it's like, you're doing a great job. You're doing amazing and you're okay. And you're not defined by the things that you do. You're not defined by your job. And this is just a segment in your life. If you, I'm talking to myself, right? Um, If you zoom out, this is just going to be like a little blip and you're getting better and better and you have so much to be grateful for. And then sometimes we just want to be witnessed. I'm part of a mastermind and that has been a new thing for me because I'm not used to being witnessed. I'm used to being the strong one. And I love the women in my mastermind. They come in and sometimes they say like, I just want to be witnessed. I'm going through X, Y, Z. And I love that. It's like, oh, that's actually strength. I want to be seen. I want to be seen. I want people to see and hold me in this difficult moment that I'm having. That was freaking new to me. And I was like, oh, I'm still practicing it, you guys. And maybe this is me practicing it right now. Like you're seeing me. And so who can see you? And I will say this with a word of caution, because I think sometimes we want to be seen by the wrong people. And there are people that are able to support us and to hold space for us. And that might be your spouse or it may not be. That might be your partner. It may not be. That might be a friend. That might be your therapist. If you have a therapist or if you feel like you're going through a lot of life stuff, I highly recommend one because I know at least for me, I don't want to be that friend or that wife even that is just always talking about the the problems, right? But there's a fine line. There's, I guess there's a fine line. So there's some people, especially on social media, that, for example, I'm like, how are you? For If I have a group or some, stuff like that, or, or just in posts. And then without fail, it's the same people that constantly talk about all the things that are wrong in their life, all the medications they're taking, And what that does is, well, no, it's not anti-manifestation. It's actually manifesting more of what you don't want. And that that's dangerous territory. So I feel like there's a space, there's a time and space to vent, to be held, to be nurtured, to be seen. And then there's also the time and space to do the gratitude, to express the gratitude, to not constantly be focused on the problem on what's wrong. And that's really what I'm trying to shed light on in this podcast or in this series where I'm really focusing on health and the practices that help with healing or any tough times, but also with manifestation because the principles are the same. You get what you focus on. And if you're always focused on what's not working and what's wrong, you're going to get more of that. And if you focus on what is good in your life, what you desire, what you, yeah, what you want, including health and, um, and prosperity, like whole holistic prosperity, it doesn't mean that you are always going to get the desired outcome. And I say that because I've, we have a friend that recently lost his wife to cancer, despite all the praying and all, all the belief that she could heal. That's also just part of life, right? Like life happens. Whoa, we are getting deep in this podcast. So I hope that this was helpful. Again, if you would like to receive my Quantum Leap Higher Self Meditation, the gift, if you write a review, screenshot it, send it to me, I will send it your way instantly, not instantly, as soon as I see your message. I'm also linking Tara Brack's video. Uh, below that I happen to bump into. I own several of her books. I have read several of her books. I love her. And that's all, folks.
I'm so happy to be on this journey with you. My hope and desire is to bring you some actual specialists that are in the healing world to talk about, for example, breath and hypnosis and how that helps with manifesting, but not only manifesting health, even if we focus specifically on health, but manifesting in general. And yes, health, because we are whole beings. And when we exist in this body and we feel fully vibrant and alive, my gosh, that's when we are unstoppable. So that concludes this episode of Next Level Greatness. And I will see you next time. If you loved this episode and if you're loving my podcast, I would love for you to leave a review. They really do make a difference in spreading the word and having more people be impacted. Also, I'd love for you to join me in my Facebook community called The Magnetic Portal. You can find the link in the show notes. I'll see you next time.